Here we have a HP Color Laser Jet 4650N printer, which is basically a glorified brick, or a very big brick, in that it won't do much. So, this brick now just does this. Well, I say it just does this. It does do something slightly um, in terms of printing a test page. And um, basically, the test page has just got lots of lines on it. But yeah, so as you can see, we've just got a, a blank screen, backlit blank screen, ready data stays solid green, and attention stays solid, solid amber. That's as much as it'll do unless we just have a look. I need a, um, a thin pointed object to form this bit. That may do it. So there's a little pinhole on the left hand side of the printer towards the back. Let's see if I can show you that. Yeah, it's just there. Look. So if we stab it with something, well, gently obviously, it won't damage no, damage anything. There you go. And now, just printing out a test page. It just has lots of lines to show you that the printer engine is actually working. Oh, does that mean we've got a paper jam? <laughs> Possibly. Okay, we'll try again. There's no paper jam there. They do that from time to time, these things. There you go. Let's print that test page. And all it gives you is lots of lines. You can see that okay. Um, just to show you that the printer engine is actually working. Right, anyway, so the card that I've got in the machine at the moment is corrupt. The firmware card, that is, it's a compact flash 32 meg card. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the card out of the machine and then I shall overwrite the card with a working version of the firmware using a program called HTD Raw copy I believe it's called or something like that anyway but I'll show you in a moment I'll set the camera up so you can see it on the screen so you can see exactly what I mean but the card in the machine at the moment is corrupt it's not the correct card in there actually it's a 128 meg card but I do know the 128 meg card works with it because I've actually got one that does work with it so but yeah I'll show you that a bit right so let's pull the formatter board out of the machine I've already undone all the edge screws that lock it in place I do say to remove the actual direct card out of the machine while doing this, but I'm not overly bothered. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. That's the board. Shame we didn't have a bit more light in here. But as you can see, here's, here's your three card slots. The bottom one is for your firmware. That's your memory there. Remember, you've got two slots, only the ones populated on this one. But you've got three card slots, CF compact flash card slots. I'm going to pop the, the bottom one out, put him to one side for a moment, and then we shall pop him. Now, I did try my other card reader, but for some reason it doesn't like it. It's a more modern one as well. This, <laughs> this one I've had for about 15 years now. So we'll put the card reader in there. Put the card in the card reader. It's a generic card reader that does most common cards, and it's micro USB, mini USB even. Sorry, uh, plug them into the computer. And as you can see, we have a card that's been found. 
Right, so here we'll open up our HDD raw copy tool and accept the or click yes to the UAC control. Right, now we need to find out where the original version of the file is. I've already um, placed a working version of the firmware on the computer as an image file. So we'll double click the image file. I don't want the original corrupt because that's obviously the corrupt version. Go to there, go to working, click on that, click open. Then we'll click continue to select where I want the file being written to, which is you know USB CF reader. Continue. And then it'll it'll warn you to say that you are about to erase everything that's on the card which we are quite happy with because we know there's nothing on the card that's of interest to me. Click on start. As you can see, it says here, look, 131.07 megabytes. And the original card is 32 meg, but I'm not bothered. So I've got quite a few of them lying around and it will do the job that I want it to do. So if you click yes on that. It doesn't take long, it takes what, less than a minute? Probably less than 30 seconds actually. There you go, that's done. So task complete. We can close that now. And then we can eject the card. Okay, close that. So right, let's see. pull the flash card out of the card reader. And for a minute. Pop the compact flash into the as you can see, that's not the original card. If you know anything about these printers, that's not the original card for these formatter boards. The actual original is here. And it is working fine now, although it wasn't to start with. And I don't know if you can see that very easily. But that's the original 32 meg card that was in this board originally. But as I know that works, so I've tried it. We'll plug him back in. So, because in the bottom slot, it actually says firmware next to the slot. If you can see that firmware slot, which is means the bottom one, basically. So pop him in. Push him back. Just want to make sure everything's working as it should be. Apologies for the lighting, but I'll show you what I did to remove the formatter board from the HP forty six fifty end laser printer, colour laser jet printer even. So what I did first, is it does say, remove the, actually, the tight anyway, I believe, I removed the HP Jet Direct card in the formatter board itself, first and foremost. So I popped him out. And this will be in reverse order because obviously all the screws, well, I'll take them out first and foremost. Basically, this slides in via these rails, top and bottom. One up, one at the top, one at the bottom. And then you just, when you come to put it in, you basically just line it up with those slots, top and bottom, and it'll just slide in. Just be gentle. And then just give him a bit of an oomph push towards the end when you, just to make sure he's locked in place and he's not going anywhere. And it's just a case of eight screws. Four on the left, four on the right. As you're looking at it, that is. And so what I generally do is just stagger them as I put them in. And even though it hasn't got the original compact flash card in there now. I'm not bothered because it does work. It has been tested. If I need to use the other one. Plus I've got an image file on the computer as well. If I ever I need to copy the data across again to another compact flash card or whatnot. So I think it may have been a power surge result that caused the problem originally. Either a power surge or, or something like that.
most people would probably use electrical screwdriver or a battery screwdriver or whatnot. But yeah, it's just too much, too awkward to go and grab it just for this. That's why I don't bother. I'm just absolutely chuffed to bits that it's working again. It should be. I was hoping it would work with a USB cable with the, with the firmware, but I did try, it didn't like it, so but I'm just happy it's working again now. Right. Check the direct card. And again, this just slots in place. The board goes into the wider end of the gap. I'm surprised I didn't have to reconfigure the HP Jet Direct card to be fair. No. Typed in the web configurator address and off it went. Bingo. If you do have to move this about on your own, then be a bit careful because these are particularly light. No, oh, quite heavy. Remember the old technique? Bend your knees, not your back. <laughs> As I say, there you go, there you have it. So let's try to show you that going in and coming out. There you are. So, but yeah, if you've got any comments or questions, by all means leave a comment down in the comment section. I'll try and help where I can, of course. And if I can't, if I don't have the answer for you, I'll do some research and see what I can find for you. So now we can. See what happens, oh, see, see, see that a bit, just so we can get the LEDs in as well. So now we'll turn them on. And voila! We have a working printer again. I'm not sure what, what pointed me to uh, the fact that it may be the compact flash card was corrupted, but I've done a lot of search on the internet and that's what it led me to believe. Thankfully a friend of mine's got a few of these printers, one of them's basically scrap, although the compact flash card and it works fine. That's how I managed to get a, uh, a working, working image of the compact flash firmware. So as you can see, it's now doing what it should be doing. Although a couple of the toners in here aren't genuine HPs, but it works. This has been not working for a very long time. There you go, so black and yellow I believe are okay. And about half half full. Uh, and the magenta and cyan, I believe that's the ones. Um, doesn't know what they are. Right, I'm just going to show you working by printing out a status page. And information, supply status page. Change it to trade two, that's fine. And there you have it. One printer that is working reasonably well, although you're not going to go sit very well from the light in the room. I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with that. It's working as it should be. And that's the main thing. Saves it just being a doorstop nowadays. <laughs> I've also got a black and white printer, a laser jet as well, that I use just for black and white 
uh, printouts uh, and saves me firing this one up and using all the colours to do a black and white page. Uh, and it's a lot cheaper, it's a lot more cost effective than just having this one. So if you can afford it and you've got the room and the time and whatnot, and you can get yourself a colour and a black and white laser jet, then that's what I'd suggest to do. Because uh, it just it's just so much more cost effective. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that or gained something from it. And until the next one, thanks for watching.